Good morning, everybody. I'd ask the elected officials to kindly take your seats at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Robert Sullivan. I'm mayor of the city of Brock and the city of Champions. I want to thank you for being here today as we celebrate the 21st anniversary of a 9-11 remembrance. Um, I do at this time would ask that we please stand, continue to stay standing, and we will pledge the allegiance at this time, please. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we will uh, play our national anthem.
At this time, I would ask the Reverend William McCoy, fire chaplain, please come with the opening prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, we gather here again, mindful of the attack on our country 21 years ago. We grieve, Lord, for the many lives lost. We sympathize with their families and friends, comrades. We pray for their strength and their courage and their consolation. Lord, we recall with pride the countless acts of heroism, the sacrifices made by so very many that day and in the days that followed. We give you thanks for them, thanks for those who gave of their lives and life itself, making the ultimate sacrifice. Be with us, we pray, O oh Lord, be with the personnel of our fire services, those who serve in law enforcement and with first responders everywhere. Be with public servants who seek your guidance. Be with the men and women of our armed forces, their families and their at home and abroad. Defend them, O Lord, with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Grant them courage in the perils they face and a sense of your abiding nearness always. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. You may be seated. Again, I want to wish you a good morning, and I want to thank you for joining us here at City Hall uh, as we, again, on an annual basis, remember 21 years ago the events of 9-11 in New York City and in Virginia and in Pennsylvania. I want to recognize at this time our Fire Chief Brian Ardelli, our Police Chief Brenda Perez, Best Congressman of the United States of America, Steve Lynch, for being here, Congressman. I'd like to name off the elected officials that have joined us here today, uh, Council President Jack Lally, Councilor Jeff Thompson, Councilor Suna Castro, Council Mac D'Agostino, Council Rita Mendez, State Rep Jerry Cassidy, State Rep Michelle Dubois, State Senator Michael Brady, from our school committee, Jared Homer, Tony Rodriguez, Joyce Azak, who's the vice chair, Tim Sullivan, I want to thank Plymouth County DA Tim Cruz for being here. I also want to thank Fire Chief Ken Galligan, Fire Chief Richie Francis for being here. They're always here. Thank you very much, Chiefs, for being here. I want to thank Bill Hill, President of Local 144. Archie Gormley, former President of Local 144, for being here as well. <clears throat> I want to you can give a round of applause. Sure. In addition, I really want to thank... Uh, Brockton Police Department, Honor Guard, Brockton Fire De Department, Pipes and Drums, Honor Guard, and all the really the brave men and women that serve and protect each and every day our city of champions. Let's give our firefighters, our police officers, our city employees and school employees a round of applause. From law enforcement to our first responders, we have courageous men and women here in our city of champions, in our commonwealth, and in our nation. And I truly want to thank every person that has served or is currently serving the armed services here in the United States of America to make our nation the best in the world. 21 years ago today, the day started just like any other day. There are some in the attendance today that actually don't remember that day or weren't even born. I will tell you, it was a beautiful day. I remember well. Like most days, we woke up early and we all decided to either go to work or go to school. There were men and women that were at Logan Airport getting on planes, men and women that were going on their shifts as firefighters or police officers, men and women going to work at the World Trade Center or the Pentagon, men and women that were just doing what we do each and every day. But before our morning could begin, we were truly all in shock, and the world changed rapidly as our beautiful nation came under attack that day. We all know the facts. Four planes were hijacked. Two planes crashed into the World Trade Center in New York City. Another plane crashed into the Pentagon in Virginia. And the last one 
Brave Flight 93, where the brave Americans fought back, crashed in that field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The images that day were truly horrendous and sad and challenging to watch. I remember uh, that iconic photo of Assistant Fire Chief Jerry Barbara. He was the command chief down at Tower 2. Everybody remembers that photo of Jerry looking up and seeing that smoke billowing from the tower. As a Catholic, I proudly remember Father Michael Judge, Franciscan priest, who was a chaplain there. And what did Father Judge do? What did Father Michael do moments before his death? He did what all priests do. He prayed and he comforted those. And we all remember that famous slogan by Tom Beamer on Flight 93, let's roll, let's roll. So today we come together as we will always come together as a nation to remember the brave fighters that day, the firefighters, the transit, the NYPD, those that served at the Pentagon, the first responders, the paramedics, and the military men and women running in and out of buildings to recover and save lives. Those evil people that day might have knocked us down to our knees, but by God, they didn't break us. They definitely did not break us. And I want to thank the, the youngsters here bringing that side that they brought today. Freedom isn't free. We were made stronger that day. The nation came together. 20 years later, 21 years later, we continue to be strong, and we continue to fight evil in this world. Our country truly changed on September 9-11. New dimension of awareness became part of our daily lives. We didn't stop living. We didn't stop enjoying life. We just look at life differently now. We understood more than ever that there are risks each and every day that our brave police, firefighters, and military take to serve and protect. And I've said this many, many times, and I'll continue to say it as long as I serve in the public realm. I don't have it in my fabric to run after someone with a gun or after a burning building, running into that building. I don't have that in my fabric. I acknowledge that. But I truly thank God each and every day of the brave men and women that call to serve and protect that have that in their fabric, that don't hesitate for a second. When we look at those images of 9-11, they know it was dire. But what did they do? They did their job. They ran in. They knew there was a high risk probability that they might not come out of that building. They may not come back to see their loved ones, their families. But they did it because that's their job. And let's give them a round of applause because that continues to this day. Today is a solemn day. It's a day of remembrance. But it's also a day of remembering how great our nation is. How truly great our nation is. And at this time, one aspect of our great nation is we have a congressman that cares about veterans, cares about seniors, cares about first responders, just cares about Americans. I said this last week when I saw the congressman, he might have been born in Southie, but he could have just as easily been born in our city of champions. At this time, Congressman Stephen Lynch. Good morning. Thank you for being here. There's a saying that there is loyalty in the simple act of remembrance. And it makes me so proud to be part of the Brockton delegation, to be here this morning and to see all of you. Uh, as, as the mayor rightfully uh, mentioned, there are some here, uh, very young. Thank you for the flags, by the way, uh, who weren't alive on that day. But I have a full memory of Pearl Harbor. And it was because my mom and dad, my uncles and aunts, people in our community caused us to remember that day. Our nation held sacred the sacrifices that were made on that day. September 11th was such a day. I choose to remember the heroism of that day, just as, as the mayor has, has recalled. I was elected on September 11th, 2001, the day of the attack. And for those who have run for office, uh, my colleagues in state government and the city council and the school committee and, and our local officials, you know that election day is your most orchestrated day that you will ever have. Uh, they tell you where to go, when to be there, you know, every step of the way is laid out. So on that morning, a morning not unlike this, uh, although there were fewer clouds in the sky, uh, you know, we went about that day that we thought was going to be 
uh, fairly well orchestrated. We ended up, of course, by the end of the day, having to pull, pull down our, our campaign. Uh, the phones were down for a while. Uh, and then at the end, when we were victorious, uh, we had canceled the party and just explained that events of the day surpassed any, any election to Congress. But I remember when, we, when I first took the oath of office in Washington, I was assigned, this was days, this was just a matter of weeks after the, the attack, I was asked to take a position on the Oversight Committee, which I still sit on today. And one of our first tasks was to review the attack, review how that happened, and prepare America's response. And one of the most memorable moments I have during that investigation is that we, we, were, trying to, we were trying to understand the, the activities of our fire department personnel, police, and EMS. And while we knew their actions were heroic, we, we actually got the intercepts, the radio intercepts of that day. And so we were listening to these fire lieutenants and chaplains on their radios as they went into the, they gathered at the, in the, in the lobby of the South Tower and they proceeded upward. And so we were able to listen to the dialogue between these heroes, the police department, talking with the firefighters, dragging equipment, describing the equipment they, they were bringing up, the, the EMTs who were going up that tower. So we were able to listen to the dialogue of these American heroes during that hour. And there was no doubt, no doubt in my mind that from the way they spoke to each other, that they knew, they knew to a certainty that many of them were not coming out alive. And yet they continued. And they reported as they met civilian office workers coming down the stairwells and trying to redirect them out to the street. And this went on for, for literally hours, this dialogue. And the last, the last transmission we have was from a fire team with a couple of police officers and, and one emergency technician on the 82nd floor, 82nd floor of the South Tower before it came down. Think about that. With, with axes, with gear, with, with all their equipment, in that blistering heat, knowing what they were up against, they climbed to the 82nd floor. That's the type of heroism that we recognize today. But it's not just in those 433 firefighters or the 60 police officers or the eight emergency technicians that, that perished on that day. It's about the men and women who stand up before us. These firefighters from Brockton, these police officers from Brockton, these emergency medical technicians from Brockton, who at a moment's notice, because they are duty bound, would have to respond just as those firefighters and police officers and emergency te technicians did on September 11, 2001. So we're here to honor them as well. I'm enormously proud to be here this morning. I want to thank my partner, Mayor Bob Sullivan, for his, the detail that, that, that he has paid to the remembrance here today. Brockton is the embodiment of, of what is best about America. The way you focus on your first responders, your police, your fire, with adequate funding and support and appreciation for the job that they do every day and the, the sacrifice of their families because it is stressful, the way you take care of your, your children and make sure they are protected and cared for, the way you take care of your seniors to make sure that in the twilight of life they receive the dignity and the respect that they have earned 
and that we owe them, and the way you honor your veterans for their courageous service to this country. It makes me proud in every, every respect. God bless you all for being here this morning. Let's hold in our heart the sacrifice that we've made by all those courageous Americans on September 11, 2001. Let us also hold in our hearts and pray for the safety and well-being of our police, our fire, and our first responders. May God bless the city of Brockton. May God continue to bless the United States of America. And let us be loyal to this day. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. At this time, we will take a moment of silence to honor those lost on American Airlines Flight 11 that crashed into the North Tower. Thank you. At this time, it's my honor to have Brockton Police Chief Brenda Perez come to the podium. Good morning. We have come together today to honor all those who perished on, 9, on September 11. Some may be too young to remember that day. Some may not have even been born. For some, memories have faded. But for those who have spent their lives in the service of others, be it in law enforcement, fire services, or the military, the memories of the terrorist attack that took so many lives remains fresh. None of us who were around will forget that day or the lives lost. The men and women of the Brockton Police Department want to remember and pay tribute to the courageous New York City firefighters and paramedics killed that day while rushing into the buildings as everyone else was rushing out. We remember and honor the service and sacrifice of the New York Police Department officers, the Port Authority police officers killed in the line of duty. We remember the civilians and military personnel killed at the Pentagon, and we remember the nearly 3,000 who died at the towers and on the planes. We honor and pay tribute to the men and women in our military today. Thank you. To our police officers, our firefighters, our paramedics, thank you. As we gather in remembrance, we should pledge to serve in whatever meaningful way we can. Just as the Brockton Police Department will never forget the ultimate sacrifices made on September 11, 2001, we will always remember and will continue to serve and be there whenever Brocktonians call us. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Perez. At this time, it's my honor to have Brockton Fire Chief Brian Nardelli come to the podium. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here today. As we remember and move forward in our lives after 21 years, we have to collectively, everyone always says, never forget. And I think one thing to make sure we always do is to always remember. If you notice in our ranks today, we're missing one member that we had adopted from the FDNY many years ago. Lieutenant Michael Bishop, who was a serving lieutenant in the FDNY who made Brockton his home after he retired and served at the grounds where the Trade Center fell, looking for bodies, looking for downed firefighters and police officers, has perished back in February from 9-11 industry, 9-11 illnesses. Firefighters, first responders, and the like have been dying in those 21 years because of the toxic chemicals and and other factors that went on at that site. Over 2,000 have perished. Over 2,000 have illnesses from that day. And at this point, 299 first responders have died that worked at that site. 
at the pace they're going, those first responders, we will outlast that number of 343 of the firefighters that died. Although we talk about these grim milestones, there was triumph that came out of that day. Caring, kindness, people caring for one another like you haven't seen in many years. One individual I'd like to speak on today is a firefighter by the name of Stephen Siller. Stephen Siller was a firefighter that was assigned to Squad Company 1 in the borough of Brooklyn. Stephen Siller got off his shift that morning and was supposed to meet his brothers and his, and his sister that morning to play golf. Stephen had a very difficult time growing up. Stephen lost his parents at the age of eight and was raised by those same siblings. When Stephen left that morning and went to go play golf, he heard on the radio about the attacks of the World Trade Center. As any firefighter would do, he thought, what can he do? And he did what firefighters do. He went back to squad one in Brooklyn, grabbed his gear, drove to the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, which had now been closed because of security reasons, threw 75 pounds of gear on his back, ran through the tunnel to get to the towers. Unfortunately, Stephen was killed that day in the collapse of those towers. Out of that, though, and some of you may know, is the Tunnels to Towers project. The Tunnels to Towers project builds homes for veterans that were wounded, firefighters that are wounded. To this date, over 350 homes have been built through the Tunnels to Towers project. I think something to keep in mind is, Stephen grew up a Franciscan, as we heard earlier. Father Michael Judge was a Franciscan. And the motto of the Franciscans is to say, while we are here, let us do good. I think that's what Stephen did that day, losing his life, but think about the remembrance and how we celebrate his loss in that Tunnels to Towers project. Thank you all for being here. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you very much, Chief, Chief Nardelli. Uh, at this time, uh, we will be uh, laying the, uh, the wreath. I'm going to ask the two youngsters to join us because they were nice enough to come here and give out flags. So please, come on.
At this time, I would ask that uh, Fire Chaplain Reverend Ortez Vandros please come to give the closing prayer. May we bow our heads and shall we pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we shall never forget the 9-11 attacks that have brought so much hurt and suffering in our land. But our pledge today is that we will, as servants, rebuild that which has been torn down and we will repair the mended broken hearts and we will share the love of Christ to those who are hurting, those who seem helpless and lost. This is your humble prayer today from your servants. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Vandross. Uh, at this time, I also want to acknowledge and thank Robert Graham, the commander of the VFW. <clears throat> VFW folks uh, did a freedom walk march this morning prior to this ceremony i want to thank you robert for what you and your team do over there each and every day god bless you sir thank you <laughs> so again I, I do want to thank each and every one of you for being here today it's what the city of champions is all about coming together in good times and bad times but we will never ever ever forget so at this time the brockton firefighters will close us out and conclude the ceremony with the musical selection.
Thank you very much again. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.